So he said that he's going to set us up with an appointment with the interventional radiologist to talk about a procedure um, called the fallopian tube recanalization. So the FTR, which is basically to check, um, which is basically to unblock the tubes if need be. Hi there. Okay, so we uh, on the 15th of September. This is the next part. Basically, we went to KKH. I went to do another blood test. Whoa. Okay, that the doctor told us to do because for my progesterone and the TSH, which is a thyroid stimulating hormone. Um, you have to do it on a certain day in your cycle. So we did that. And then we went to see the interventional radiologist to talk about the FTR, which is the fallopian tube recanalization. So in the last appointment, we were told that possibly my right ovary, um, fallopian tube um, could be blocked, could be, no confirmations. So um, if it was, then the next thing is to do the FTR, um, but we need to talk to the doctor first um, for like a counseling session, just so you know what to expect. Um, they get your consent, etc. Blah, blah, blah. So of course, before we got to this counseling session, I had done a deep dive on the internet to read about what it was, what are the mm. risks, um, what kind of questions to ask. <laughs> yeah. So eventually the ward nurse came to get us. We went up into the super small room, literally enough for the doctor's table, a computer, desktop, the doctor, me, Muaz, then the nurse was standing in a corner yeah. um, typing on a laptop that was so on a table. It was, was squeezed in. It was a small room. So he basically talked us through what the procedure was. He talked us through... Uh, what the risks was, he answered all of my questions. So basically this FTR, they don't do the FTR blindly. So what they do is they actually um, do the HSG again, which is the x-ray and the dye, to ensure that there is a blockage. So he told us that when you do a HSG normally, so you know your ovarian tubes, like your fallopian tubes go out from your uterus, in a normal HSG, they don't block off the side that they don't want to see. They just insert the dye and it spreads. So naturally, if one of your fallopian tubes is larger than the other, or if your body is positioned a little bit slanted, the dye automatically flows into one side more than it would the other. Um, so he said that's why he said that the other that, that the doctor um, Professor Jerry was telling us that it could not be it, it, this possibility it wasn't blocked. So he said what they're going to do is they'll do the HSG again, um, and then when they do the HSG, um, if they do see that it is blocked, then they will proceed with the FTR. But on that day, they got my consent for both procedures because on the day of the procedure, if I decided to go through with it, um, I would be a little bit knocked out, you know? So I wouldn't be able to give my um, consent. So the difference between this FTR and the HSG, it's the same similar procedure. They'll run a catheter up into your cervix and into your uterus. They'll inject the dye um, into the two sides. They'll take an x-ray to see whether or not there's any blockage. If there is, they'll run another catheter, which is like a small tube, into your fallopian tube with the little holes at the end. And basically they like unblock it through like a vacuuming or suctioning or something and just like breaking apart whatever is blocking. So he said, that they'll spray their cervix with an anesthetic anesthetic to numb the cervix and then I'll also be under light sedation okay um, a sedation of like fentanyl which is like the drug that now in the US many people are overdosing on and just passing out on the streets um, fentanyl and I think the other one is called mydocloxam I could be making that up I'm also right the right, correct one here so fentanyl is the painkiller um, is the pain inhibitor and the mydocloxam or mydodadlazam or whatever it's called that's the anesthetic to put you to sleep basically so they can't give it to me too early the fentanyl because in singapore you can only have five legal doses for a procedure like this and the fentanyl wears off fairly quickly so yeah so i told him like can you just knock me out and he's like no we can't just knock you out um you'll be lightly sedated oh man when we wanted to do it as in which cycle so you have to call them up on the first day of your period and tell them that you've got a period. They'll give you a date for day nine or day 10 of your cycle to do the procedure um, to make sure that one, you're not on your period and two, you're not ovulating yet. But it's a day surgery situation. So after the 
procedure I would have to recover in the hospital for four to six hours before I can go home and they'll put me on hospitalization leave for two to three days. The doctor was saying that after the FTR, there's a slightly higher chance of successful pregnancy. So he did tell us that not to wait too long after the procedure to really try to conceive um, because there's a 20 to 30 percent chance. 20 to 30 percent chance of pregnancy, higher chance of pregnancy. Thank you, and have a nice day. Oh, I don't miss this pain from the hospital. This is a const- okay. consistent, like, neat, 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 neat. She's about to go in for the day surgery. How are you feeling, hun? I don't know. I'm trying not to think about it. Because I think it's going to freak me out. <laughs> I'm just not thinking about it. <laughs> it's going to make me panic if I think about it. So I don't think I should. Okay.